Okay, day four, admin of code solved with SQL. Uh, the problem this time is pretty fun. It's basically just solving uh, the game of bingo. So you're given uh, a set of bingo boards and the order that numbers are pulled. And part one is about finding the first board that would win. Um, and in order to get your answer, which is kind of fun, you not only have to find the first board that would win, you then have to sum the numbers that were never called uh, after the winning number. Um, and then uh, multiply that with the number that was called for the board to win. So for this one, uh, it was number 24 was called, which caused uh, the board to win, uh, this board right here to win uh, in this row. And then all these unhighlighted numbers are numbers that were never called after 24. So you sum all those, multiply by 24, and you get your answer. Uh, solving this in SQL was surprisingly easy, if not verbose. Um, and the biggest issue at first was just getting this into a format that I could work with. So let me show you the answer, and then we'll go from there. Okay, here's my answer for part one. Uh, so I created two tables that bring in the raw format from the input. Unfortunately, the format's not very SQL friendly to start, so these are uh, not fun. So the numbers, I just bring in the raw text. So given this set of numbers, I just bring in the line as is. And then for the boards, I bring in each line one by one with a line number associated with it. So given this, we're bringing in each line and including the blanks. Uh, so not very fun to work with. If you look at our raw inputs, you can see that we just have one line of the numbers. And if you look at our boards, we just have raw lines. So step one of solving bingo here was just getting this into a format that I could work with. For the numbers, it wasn't too hard. Um, similar to my day three answer, I just uh, used this lateral unnest with ordinality query in order to split uh, each number by comma and then get its order and then the actual number. So the first number that was picked was seven, second was four, etc. cetera. Um, I explained the lateral unnest ordinality stuff in the day three video. So this wasn't too hard to get usable numbers in the order that they were pulled. The board was a little bit harder. So for the board, I ended up doing this uh, ugly looking query um, and I ended up doing it across two queries. So this is the first part. Um, so we have, if you just look at these first two columns, this is our actual input format. Uh, and what I'm first doing here is using this blank line to our benefit in order to figure out uh, and segment the boards from each other. So you can see I'm assigning a board ID of one, two, and three to separate these boards. And I'm also getting the row of one through five of the rows. Um, and that's all due to this blank line existing. So the way I do this is uh, select from our input boards which again is just these first two columns. And I'm just keeping all the columns, but adding a couple, the board ID and the row. So for the board ID, what I'm doing is when the line is empty, then I am treating it as one, otherwise zero, and then summing it uh, across all of them. So this is sort of a trick using a window function so that uh, basically it only uh, sum adds one to the previous rows every time there's a, um, blank, and then I'm adding one at the end. So that actually the sum here is zero, then plus one. So board ID is one. Then th there's a one that happens here. So then it comes two, then it becomes three. Um, and uh, these are using window functions which I've used every day so far. And then the second trick is the opposite. When the blind's not empty, I'm incrementing by one. Otherwise, when it is empty, I'm adding negative five. And so this is a trick to have our row numbers actually go one, two, three, four, five, and then zero. And luckily zero is on the blank line uh, and go over. So this is a way that I'm getting the board ID and the row populated. Um, and then the second part of the query, which I'll show in a second, is then getting rid of these blank lines, which I don't want anymore. Okay, here's the second part of the query. So board split is the query I just did in order to uh, split the board, segment them by board ID and row. So we just showed that. And then now I make another table called boards um, using board split. Um, and this is uh, ignoring the empty lines now. So since we are, we don't need those anymore. And then doing this lateral unness trick again uh, in order to split the line by spaces uh, and then get the rows and columns uh, for the 
boards. So if I run this, I now have an input format that is the board IDs, uh, followed by the row, column, and the number in that row and column. So they're five by five boards, so every board ID has 25 rows, and you could start seeing them here. So the next trick I try to do now that I have these numbers and boards in sort of a SQL friendly format um, was trying to figure out how does how could I figure out if, what board wins first. Um, and the idea I had was to replace all these numbers in the board with their order. So anytime there's a seven, I want to replace it in the board with a one and a four with a two and a nine with a three and so on. Um, and then using that, I could always use the number here to also know what order it was picked. And I figured that if I had all of that in that order, then I could look at the rows and columns and just find the um, you know, maximum number in there to figure out when the last uh, number had to be called in order for that row to possibly win. And so that's what I ended up doing next. So it's getting a little long, so I'm not going to run the um, queries right for this, but this is the board's foreign key query is what ends up doing this. So boards up here is what I did show to this point. This creates the table with the rows, columns, and the number in the board. And now I'm just creating the same thing. So I saw the board ID row column, but instead of the number that's actually on the board, I'm replacing it with the index from the numbers. So I'm getting all of that ordering, uh, joining it on numbers where the numbers match, and then replacing it with the index. And what you get after that is instead of, uh, if we go back to this example, um, instead of seeing, for example, seven here, you'd actually replace it with one. And then once I do that, I do sort of an expensive trick in order to get the answers. Instead of sort of iterating and finding the answer, I pre-calculate all the possible winning rows and winning columns. Uh, and then later on, I order them by the earliest possible winning pick uh, in order to get it. So for example, here's how I calculate winning rows and winning columns is the same. Um, I select from that uh, boards FK. So boards FK is the table that has the pick orders rather than the actual numbers. So I, I select from there, grouping it by ID and row. So for every ID and every row in the table, um, I am summing the pick orders, which uh, uh, kind of gives you a hint at how early everything was. But this is the more important column here. This is actually the critically important column. So the maximum pick order is the most recent. So this maximum of all the orderings that are for uh, an ID or row is the er uh, earliest possible win that that row could have had. So if we go back and look at some examples, so for this sample, board three here, row one, uh, this row couldn't have possibly won until 24 is called because 24 is the last number to be called in this row. So whether this was the first row to win in the whole game, we don't know. But if this were to win, if this was a possible winning row, then 24, when 24 is called, is the earliest possible time it could have won. And that's what I am calculating here. This most recent or max pick order is the earliest possible pick that this row could have possibly won. So once you have a table of all the possible winning rows, then you could order by most recent to figure out what is the er, the row that won earliest. So here's what that winning row table ends up looking like. So we've ordered it already by most recent. Um, and for the sample problem, for we know that the row is the winner, so we actually already see our winner here. Um, but board three, row one, is actually the earliest possible win that could have happened. Um, but we also have to look at the columns. And this is the column version. Um, if the column were to win, then board two, column three, with pick number 15 is the earliest possible win. Uh, but we know that pick 12 won for the row. So um, the next challenge, now that we have the possible winning rows and possible winning columns, uh, is to figure out which of the two won first and then calculate the answer. So the next thing I do is using the winning row and winning columns, I uh, calculate if that row were to have won, uh, what is the sum of all the unmarked uh, numbers at the time it would have won? So again, I'm doing something really expensive here, which is calculating all the possible results, which is uh, something that's really easy to do with SQL. So using the row example, um, we do a bunch of join tricks here in order to get the winning row ordered by the most recent um, so that we're potentially seeing the winning ones first. 
And then now we group it um, by the ID, row, and most recent. So given that grouping, uh, if that would have won, then we could sum all the numbers uh, that aren't picked as the remainder. And in order to get the numbers that aren't picked, we use this join, uh, join condition here, where we're joining with boards, where the boards match the winning row, but we, don't, we want to ignore the row that won because those are obviously marked. And we want to ensure the pick order is after the one that would have won. Um, looking at this now, actually, we don't even need the second one because this will uh, always be true for the same row. But we want to make sure that we only include numbers that were called after the number that would have won us the row. Um, and once we do that, we get uh, some results. So looking at that table that we just created, so for row th board three, row one, which we know is the sample winner, um, the winning pick was pick number 12. Um, I don't think that's the actual uh, number that's pulled, that's the order, the, the pick order, um, but the sum of the remaining numbers would be 188, and that matches the problem text too. Um, but you can see that we calculate it for every single other uh, value as well. So now that we have all of the possible winning rows, all the possible winning columns, and all of the possible uh, remaining sums picked out for the rows and the columns, we now uh, create a table of possible answers. Um, and so we are now using a union here because this is where I'm combining the rows and the columns uh, in order to figure out our answer. So the, both the top and the bottom is the same except the one's rows and one's columns. So we'll look at the row one. So what we're doing here is pulling from uh, the winning rows the, with the remainder table um, ordered by the picks there. So this gives us you know, the earliest pick and then joining all the things we need in order to calculate the winning pick order the number that was picked as part of that and the sum and then multiplying the number and the sum to get the answer and these two uh, tables union together these two queries union together give us all possible answers depending on which row or column we pick but the correct problem answer is the one that won first so if we run the whole thing against the sample set we see that board three run uh, board three one with row one the winning pick was the 12th pick that was the 20, number 24 pulled. The remaining sum is 188. You multiply them together, you get 4,512, which is the sample answer. If you run this against the input set, you get the final answer. And then we have to do part two. Uh, part two is instead of picking which board would have won first, it's picking which board would have won last. Um, and amusingly, I solved this in probably 10 seconds after part two showed up because the way we did our SQL, we calculated all possible solutions uh, so by simply sort of switching the ordering from ascending to descending, you could figure out which board won last and you get your answer um, really easily. So I don't really need to show that at all.